Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time of the day it is in your particular part of the world. And I'm back today with another pick a card reading. First of all, for those of you in the UK, um, we've lost an hour of sleep, so I hope you are all feeling rested and because it's the weekend you've had an opportunity to have a lie in and it's not going to impact you too much. I was awake, it was beautiful, it was a lovely morning. Um, secondly, also for those of you in the UK, happy Mother's Day. Today we celebrate Mother's Day. I've put a little post on my Facebook Batshit Sight Chick page, just wishing all mums, whatever their status, whatever type of mum they are, and for those missing mums, uh, happy Mother's Day, happy Heavenly Mother's Day to some. Okay, today's reading I've got a feeling is going to be incredibly powerful. Uh, I'm going to call it Who Are You Becoming? But it was a close tie with what's your sole purpose, what are your spiritual gifts. Um, I have a feeling Who Are You Becoming might be Who Are You Becoming? in brackets, if you step into your powers, if you continue on your spiritual path. I do think it's going to be a powerful reading because four piles were quite insistent on coming out and uh, those of you that watch regularly know I usually only pick three piles. Also, whilst I was shuffling, two goddess cards really wanted to be here and they're on the table. We have Lostra, are the goddess of new beginnings and Hecate or Hecate, the, it, the goddess of the in-between or the liminal spaces. So I think there's a message for us all there. We are in Easter. Uh, it is a time of new beginnings, rebirth, clocks going forward. Um, a time of new light, longer days. For those of you in the other hemisphere, also a time of new beginnings because you are hunkering down, you have your storage, granary barns full and you're preparing for a new cycle. The in-between space, we are at the time of year where we are in between, days are nicely balanced in between light and dark um, and I feel that's what Hecate comes to show us. Um, um, on the bottom of another deck, I will try to remember to show at the end, I think there's a message for us all in the collective. And finally, I don't think I've ever really talked that much about preparation for readings. Um, I usually play a game when I choose incense or candles. Sometimes it's very clear and I'm sort of told or I intuitively know which I should pick. Other times I play a game and I have a very classy carrier bag <laughs> full of incense uh, and I just put my hand in and I pull out incense. Uh, I like to buy different brand incenses but I am a sucker for names and I'm a sucker if they put the scents on the box. So I pulled out um, an incense called Spirit Guides, which I thought was incredibly appropriate. Appropriate, you know, as I was thinking about who are you becoming, um, I've chosen goddesses, um, I've chosen ancestor cards, um, and I feel spirit is very strongly with me. It's a very frangipani, he heady smell. Um, mm. So I am feeling quite trance-like. Okay, quite a long introduction. Here are the four piles. Pile one, pile two, pile three, pile four. They predominantly all have little chips of stones, crystals. First one has a very green colouring and um, like oxidised 
brass or copper. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a chip I found somewhere rather than I bought. But I loved the green colour. Second one is a little bluey silver chip. This little fragment I know was just a little added order. I'm trying to look at the camera. Uh, it does appear to be showing up this sort of silvery colour. It's very smooth despite it looking jagged. That's the crystal for pile two. Pile three is very glossy. It's uh, an aquamarine turquoisey colour. It's completely flat on one side, raised on the other. Again, this is a little tiny um, crystal that was popped in amongst an order. I'm really sorry, I don't know what these are and I don't even want to hazard a guess. And the fourth one also has the sort of greeny flecks. There are flecks of crystal. Much greener on this side. We have sort of some black in it. It's very cool to the touch. So those are your four piles. Pile number one. Pile number two, pile number three, and pile number four. Choose your pile and I will meet you at your reading. Hello, pile number one. If you chose this pile, this is your reading. trying to look at the camera mm, to see if everything's in shot. I think it is. I think we're okay. Yeah. Okay. So the ancestor card which has come out for you is connect with water. Ocean, water spirits, Hydrate. Okay. I'm drawn to the fact that on this card, the people in the boats seem to be children. And children who are at home on the water and can navigate very easily between their homes on the stilts. So an ease to move between foundations and flow. And that's the first thing I'm picking up. I'm just going to look at all the cards. So we have air, we have earth, we have air, we have air. Star, Aquarian side, there's a lot of air on the reading tempered with a very nice seven of earth grounding and connect with water. Okay. I feel who you are becoming is somebody who is able to navigate life from both their head and their heart. Yeah. 
rooted and grounded, but able to go with the flow. There's something of a transformative energy here. I want to read from the book about these peoples, these ancestors. Okay, um, lovely, I'm just looking at the ancestors speak and the water spirits are calling to you and be close to water. This might be my watery pile, but I'm not getting that energy to be honest, so I want to read about the peoples. The Sama Baju of Maritime Southeast Asia are often called sea gypsies. Yeah, okay, this is it, gypsies, flowing, moving, transition. Transformation, I said, this, yes, this is what this is all about. Travelling, moving, moving between worlds, moving between elements. They're often called sea gypsies as they reside in seaside settlements or on small traditional wooden sailing boats. The term Sama describes the people who built houses and settled on the land, whereas Baju was used to describe the nomadic groups who lived on the sea in boats, which the Bajo people have done almost exclusively for centuries. Some Sama Bajo began to live in settlements with many small houses built close together along well-protected shorelines. Some of their homes are built on stilts directly over the ocean and are connected by narrow bridges or planks. In addition to their highly advanced navigational and seafaring skills, the Sama Baja are legendary for their exceptional free diving abilities. Yeah, diving deep. They can hold their breath and dive to great depths to collect pearl shells and other sea life. The Sama Baja believe in Umbo, ancestral spirits who can influence the weather and fishing activities. It is thought the Umbo will reward the Sama Baja by granting good luck favours or punish them by causing accidents. When they build or launch a boat, the Sama Baju perform a protection ritual, as each boat is thought to have a guardian spirit, a Samanga, who protects the vessel and the people on board from harm. Uh, I'm going to just leave the book there, quite close to the camera, and you can have a look at ancestors speak and divinatory meaning, because that's what I wanted. This is about travelling and possibly travelling uh, between realms, answering the call of your heart, blending head and heart, intellect and emotion. The first tarot card is the messenger of air or the queen, oh, sorry, the page of air. She, rather than moving quickly and delivering a message, appears to be receiving messages, listening very closely to spirit, listening to the call of intuition. She is receptive to spirit message at this time, right now. Rather than reading the next card here, I want to go to these two. So the two of air often depicts a blindfolded lady um, holding swords like a warrior, alert, tense, ready, ready to move at any time. And the five of air, the five of swords, is often a, 
a card of conflict. I think you, the person you are becoming is somebody who is much more receptive to listening to intuitive guidance, guidance from spirit, guidance from ancestors, guidance from your higher self. I think The conflict between head and heart is lessening. I, th I feel, I feel, I keep saying I think this is because it's an air energy. All right, I feel because this hand is raised, she has a bird perched on each hand. She's looking at this bird, but she's receiving from the higher realms. So I think the person that you're becoming is much more, somebody who is much more prepared to be influenced by intuition and inner knowing rather than logic. You may be an air sign. This card is incredibly beautiful for a card that usually depicts conflict. We do see the tension. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. She is balanced on a high wire in her ballerina pose. She's perfectly poised and balanced. But we have birds landing on her high wire, twanging. Don't allow Twitter and fluff to pull you off your path, to pull you off your concentration, to cause you to slip. At the moment, you are balancing things beautifully in what, what most likely are not the easiest of circumstances for you to balance these things. I think because you are learning to flow between logic, intellect and intuition, between knowing and feeling. And you're at home and quite enjoying this exploration and doing so. Um, I feel that you are on a journey, a much more spiritual journey and it's a grounded journey. It is the path that you are meant to be on. We have the Seven of Earth here. And I adore this male elf because of his pixie ears. He's one of the most beautiful ones. He's, I've talked about this card when it's come out before. So traditionally, the Seven of Earth, you've done the hard work. You've done the digging, you've done the groundwork and your tree is starting to bear fruit. You have seven pentacles. Your tree has produced seven, let's say an apple tree, seven apples. And you know that there are more to come and you know that within time the tree will bear more and more fruit. I like this because he is listening, looking, communing with this spirit. It's a lot of listening to spirit and looking for signs. We have birds, we have air, we have wings. you're definitely becoming connected to more connected to the higher realms star transformation transmutation i talked about transformation when i saw this card and travel 
Um, the star is traditionally the sign of the water bearer, um, Gemini, Aquarius, Libra, more Aquarian, I think, longer an Aquarian. This lady isn't pouring water and transmuting between two vessels. Nor does she appear to be standing in water as the star usually does. She's on a rock. She has stars at her feet, stars on her dress, stars on her headdress, star on her arm, stars on her vessel. We can't see the water in her vessel. We don't know if she has filled her vessel or if she intends to fill her vessel. I think, I think she has filled her vessel. That's the intuitive feeling I'm getting here because of the water, because you, because she has listened to spirit. And your goddess is Keridwen. Keridwen, Celtic goddess, uh, Welsh connections, Keridwen's cauldron. Uh, again, transformation, mixing, alchemizing is a, is, a, is, a, is a word. You are alchemizing. That's what you're doing. Alchemizing, using, learning how to um, blend, mix all of the elements, all of groundedness, root chakra, not being too much up in your head or away in the ethers, not being too watery. And somehow you find the right, you found the right blend to put into your cauldron. Stars on here, star above her headdress, which contains a blue crystal rather than purple for the third eye chakra. She's downloading divine intuition because she is listening. She's listening. And she's grounded the colours here, very earthy colours. Yeah, you're on your way. You're, you are transferring, transferring for sure. You are on your path. did leave this up to the camera, um, the divinatory meaning of the card, the importance of drinking clean water, hydrating your body. Um, uh, cauldron, obviously we put liquids in this water on this reading. Um, the water spirits are calling to you. They know you have a connection to natural water sources such as lakes, rivers, oceans or ponds. They want you to heed your urge to visit the water. This card is a reminder of the benefits being near water brings you. Water relaxes your mind and your body. Okay, mind, body. And allows you to feel at peace again. You don't have to live on the water, but you might like to book a holiday or visit a place with water to which you feel drawn. Working with water, manifesting with water, moon water, uh, moon rituals involving water, possibly scrying into water is what's coming through. For sure, you are becoming somebody who trusts their intuition a lot more. When you receive spiritual downloads, they do not throw you out of balance and settle you because you're grounded. 
if you are not reacting in an over emotional way or an overly intellectual way. You are blend, blending, transmuting, receiving these in a way that will be incredibly beneficial and positive in moving you forward. Um, I just want to look at the goddess to see if there's anything additional from her. The watchword on here is potential. So you have the potential to become whatever it is you wish to create in your cauldron because you've got all the tools. Quite a surprise magician isn't here to be honest. You're a child of infinite potential and the Celtic goddess Ceridwen is here to remind you of the power that resides in the womb of your heart and the chalice of your mind. So heart emotions and a mind, that's what I've been saying all the way through. Everything you need is coming together right now as if your life's reflection were shining brightly in a golden liquid in Ceridwen's magical transformative <laughs> cauldron. Imagine greatness and there will be greatness. Envision peace and there will be peace. Choose love, choose gratitude, choose faith in the divine magic that flows through you. These are the only ingredients needed for the goddess Ceridwen to work her transformation magic on your behalf. Regardless of the limitations imposed on your world by fate, culture and conditioning, your true destiny is coalescing on your behalf. You can be anything you imagine. Remember this, dream and trust that everything you need exists to make that dream a reality. This is the promise of the goddess Keridwen. Now the alignment message is there and you can possibly see it on the camera. That is, should the card come out upside down and it hasn't. So absolutely, you have your cauldron, you have your magic tools, you are listening, you are spiritually developed enough. You don't dream it, be it. <laughs> it's a song from the Rocky Horror Show. But that's it, anything you dream, you can be, you can bring into your life. You can transmute. Because you were advanced enough not to be thrown off balance by other people's opinions, by outside interference. Genuinely, it might help you to go to a place where there is water and possibly meditate, spiritually working with water, but equally well, earth, air. Incredibly balanced, beautiful reading. Who are you becoming? Whoever you want to be. That's your reading pile one. You are becoming whoever you want to be. Thanks very much. If you liked, please give this a share. Uh, drop me a comment below. If you're not already, please consider subscribing. Uh, I am doing a subscriber giveaway. Uh, sorry, a reader giveaway. Um, when, once I reach 250 subscribers, I will be giving away a free reader to um, one lucky subscriber. To be in with a chance of winning a reading, all you need to do is drop me a heart of any colour in the comment box. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. Hello Pile 2, if you chose this crystal, this is your reading. Wow. Okay, let me just check. 
that we can see everything. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Ooh, a lot of fire here, uh, certainly at the beginning. So your ancestral card is awaken your inner shaman. Connect, invoke and heal. These are three really different messages. Connect to your intuition. Uh, connect to spirit. Invoke spirit ancestors and heal, not just yourself. For sure, not just yourself here. This is powerful. Who are you becoming? Uh, certainly a healer, um, a warrior. Incredibly, incredibly tapped in this pile. Um, I'm looking here at this card, the call. It's usually judgment, but, you know, talk about answering the call. You know, spirit is calling to you. Your desti destiny is calling. There we go. I seem to be tripping out songs. That's a line from a killer's song. I don't even know which one. But destiny is calling. Open up your healing arms. Gone. I don't know the title. I'm sure if you put destiny is calling me, you'd get the song. You've got the high priestess, which is all about listening to your intuition, communication, and then all of this powerful fire energy, king of fire, male energy, emperor. And although shaman can be either gender, we appear to have a male shaman on here. He has his drum and he's conducting a fire ceremony. So something about burning, something burning away, transmuting, changing, and then invoking. So using fire in your rituals might be important. Let's start with your first tarot card. The three of fire or the three of wands. Travel card, journeying, appears to be journeying in a shell, up in the air, three lights, the light in front guiding, but the strongest is in the shell with her, her inner light, her inner compass and a light behind. You are on your way. You have set out on the path to the shaman that you are becoming. Before I read the King of Fire and the Emperor, uh, I just want to have a look at this shaman card and read from the book. For the Tuvans, every part of nature, every rock, river, mountain, animal and tree has a spirit, story and purpose. They also hold great respect for the souls of their ancestors. Nomadic cattle herders who live in yurts, Tuvans have lived in southern Siberia for thousands of years. As providers of healing, wisdom, ritual and divination, so there we go, who are you becoming? For sure a healer that word is on the card, but divination. You might read rune, you might read tarot or oracle. You might be able to read messages in fire or flames. There's a name for people who see images in, in clouds and it escapes me, but I know myself, I can almost go into a trance watching a fire. Sometimes in the evening I have just sat and watched a fire dance. So really something to do with fire might help you get into a meditative state. 
uh, I've lost my place now. I became almost meditative, meditative talking about that. Um, ritual, rituals are important. Fire rituals, I really get in fire rituals. The shaman is central to Tooth and Society. Shamans walk between worlds to communicate with spirits and provide answers and guidance for the community. So actually being a medium, being able to talk with spirit might be your gift. I'm actually not getting that, but I am getting that you can walk between worlds. Protectors of earth and guardians of nature, each shaman chooses an apprentice from within the family. Thus, shamanic knowledge is shared and preserved through the ages. Yeah. You're on your way, you're on your path. Awaken your inner shaman. I think your inner shaman has been awakened. But certainly heading towards the new moon next Friday, April Fool's Day. <laughs> it might be an idea to consider some kind of fire ritual. Look, you have the King of Fire or the King of Wands. Just look at the compassion and kindness and love and wisdom which is on his face. This is who you are on your way to becoming. Somebody who operates from a very strong, heart-centred energy. It's a king, you have an emperor, we have a shaman. So I've said they can be women, but there is something about male and masculine energy on the top row that changes on the bottom row. So possibly you need to invoke your inner masculine. Age and wisdom for sure with this king, king of fire. But despite the halo and the sunflower around his head and the red around his heart, he appears to have leaves. He's grounded, he's anchoring, he's anchoring this fire into the earth. He's earthing, he's, he's grounded. And you continue on your journey and you become even more powerful as you move into the emperor. The emperor, I believe, is connected to earth signs Possibly Taurus, that might just be the Empress. But we have a Lion and Leo, so I do still see a continuation of this Sun energy. We don't have a human Emperor, we have a Lion, the King of the Jungle. but he has a hand or a paw enclosed in armour, holding a sword. So I think we have air, you know, we have fire and earth on here, but the air with the sword. If you can remain grounded, we've got these leaves, I talked about these leaves here, oh God, I can see the glare now. Talked about these leaves here and him remaining grounded. The emperor has 
leaves. They appear to be oak or yeah, possibly some form of an oak leaf, I think. You are you are becoming an incredibly you are on your way to becoming an incredibly powerful leader a leader of a community somebody with authority somebody um, who is a ruler that people will respect and people will listen to um, the bottom row is much more feminine as I've said the call is usually judgment um, and we, we have a, a, an angel blowing a trumpet and it's divine judgment here it's called the call you're answering the call to awaken your inner sh shaman to step into your power to lead with your fiery passionate burning heart but to remain grounded um, there's nothing about so heat it can become too passionate to temper but look at the love he's tempered the heat and the fire and the passion um, and he's grounded he's earthed it then we have the high priestess usually a water sign usually watery energy very connected to intuition and to to inner knowing answered the call you've heard the call you've answered the call already all right the okay these are the tools these are the tools i'm going to leap a bit before i am and i'm going to come back uh, the, oh, you've got two twenty twenty two twentieth of the second twenty two. That could be your birthday, the twentieth of February this year. That could have been an important date for you. That's that's a Pisces birthday. High priestess, often a Piscean. There might be something really important about that date. Or twos is a number, two, two, two is a master number, but you've got four here. Look up to two, oh, two, two. There might be a, a message in there. Communication, this is what you need to be able to do now. You've awoken these powers. You have these gifts. What you need to be able to do is to communicate them clearly. Eyes are quite important on this, well actually on four of the cards, drawn to the lion's eyes, drawn to the king's eyes, drawn to Iris's eyes and the high priestess's eyes. Eyes on you, you being watchful and alert. You usually listen to the call. Perhaps you need to watch for signs or you have been watching for signs. So Iris, rainbow goddess, communication, communicating your downloads. I'm going to read Iris, I'm going to read the goddess. Clarity in communication is called for, as your words will have great impact on others now. It's a wonderful time to start writing that book, telling new stories, sharing your experiences, strength and hope with others. You have everyone's ear, so choose your message wisely. I talked about eyes and looking. And communication is usually, well, I'm thinking listening. But perhaps your communication 
is the written word people are reading. You have everyone's ear, you have everyone's eyes. <laughs> you have everyone's ear, so choose your message wisely. Others will also desire a positive and fruitful communication with you. So get ready for some amazing new opportunities to come from these discussions. Just remember to, be, to stay open. Be clear about expressing your deepest desires, always speaking with integrity, kindness and respect for yourself and others. The King of Fire and the Emperor would do no less. The Greek messenger goddess Iris is thrilled to help your words take flight. Communication improves in all your relationships when she comes to visit. Most important, however, Iris reminds you of the communication you have with the universe. You are in a mutual dialogue and now is the time to pay attention to the signs and the omens, yep, visual. Trust in this important yet subtle communication. It will never lead you astray when you listen and act accordingly. You've heard the call. Your inner shaman has been awakened. You are incredibly intuitively powerful. Perhaps you've been the high priestess who's mysterious and quiet and keeps her secrets. But you are being called to communicate your ideas with clarity, with kindness. You are becoming something incredibly powerful. You are becoming a leader. There is a community ready to follow you and read, look, listen to what you have to say. So pile two, answer that call. Okay, pile two, that was your reading. And I hope you consider giving it a like, a share, a subscribe. I am doing a free read giveaway once I reach 250 subscribers, um, if you drop a comment with a heart into the comment box, if you, if you are subscribed and you drop a comment with a heart into the box, um, you have the opportunity to win a reading of your choice with me. Um, have a wonderful Sunday or whatever day it happens to be when you listen to this reading. Thanks, Power 3. Two. Hello, pile three. If you chose this crystal, then this is your reading. Um, I've made the announcement in other piles. I am doing a free reader giveaway when I reach 250 subscribers. So to be in with a chance of winning a free reading of your choice with me, all you need to do is make sure you, you are subscribed to the channel. It's completely free, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, drop me a comment, or you don't have to even write anything, just leave me a heart of any colour in the comment box. I hope you'll consider liking and sharing as well. Let's go on to your reading pile three. Who are you becoming? What are you stepping into? Mm. Goodness. Okay. Uh, first of all, Spirit is keeping some secret from you, from me, but they're wonderful, magical secrets. Okay, your ancestor card, open to love, 
relationships, passion, fulfillment, love in all of its terms, let it into your life. You, ha you have the Empress here. You have the Hermit so you can shut off and the Moon secretive, Nick secrets, uh, traveling, heart heartbreak and loss. Okay. Pile number three, you are on your way to making healthy, positive, new connections, new relationships in your life. You may have felt disconnected, you may have felt rejected, isolated, alone, lonely. Even if you've had people around you, they may not have been the kind of people that you felt you had meaningful connections or relationships with. This is changing. Do you see this woman's body language? She is open. She's assertive. She's, her face is open. Not only is her body language open, her face is opening. She is welcoming. She's standing in her own power because she knows who she is and she is open and up for and welcoming to the new in her life. She wants to be fulfilled. She, you, wants, deeper connections and she's going to get them <laughs> for sure look 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 at how grounded both of these women are the empress and the ancestor their hands, their arms are making the same posture. She's holding wheat here. Abundance. I don't know the meaning of this belt, but it's colourful, but she appears to be abundant with her headdress and her necklaces. I'm skipping ahead of myself here. Okay, let's have a look. Pile three. No, let's have a look at what the book says about open to love because this lady is well ready to receive. Okay. For centuries, the Kalasha have lived in remote villages in isolation between northern Pakistan's Chitral Valley and the Afghan border. Many of the Kalasha are blonde haired and blue eyed, a look that is much different to other tribes in Pakistan. The Kalasha also stand out for their culture and outlook on life. Traditionally, the Kalasha are polytheistic, believing in and worshipping many gods and goddesses. So there's something unique about you. The Kalasha prefer to make love, not war, and they have a unique approach to relationships. The Kalasha women are sexually liberated and loveless liaisons hold no appeal for these spirited women. Kalasha women can choose their husbands, but if the union doesn't work out, she can contact another man she likes. She can let him know how much her current husband paid in dowry for her, and the new husband-to-be can then have to pay double that dowry price. In Kalasha cultural traditions, a couple might elope and get married even if the woman is still married to someone else. The freedom of relationship Kalasha women have enjoyed for many centuries is radically different from the patriarchal codes of so many parts of the world. Okay, so you don't have to accept less 
don't have to stay in a relationship that doesn't serve your needs anymore. This woman is strong and can make choices for herself. That's important for somebody here to, to hear. You are strong and independent and you can make choices for yourself. You do not have to accept less and staying in a loveless situation. You, this is the message that's really important for well, for this group, but there's somebody particular in this group. You are incredibly independent. You don't often ask for help or let people in. But it's okay for you to allow yourself to receive from others. Yes, this is it. You won't become weak or lose your independence if you open yourself up to people and relationships. Allow yourself to feel happiness and fulfilment. Be open to meeting people, starting a relationship and experiencing new things. Try not to feel guilty for wanting more for yourself. You deserve to be contented and fulfilled. Commit to letting other people into your personal space. Allow yourself to enjoy life again. That's the message. Don't know if it's backwards writing on the camera. I don't know. But that's the message you needed to hear. And Spirit really does have a wonderful secret for you. It's, it's hidden a little bit at the moment. But really, this is wonderful. If you're brave enough to open yourself up and to admit that you need help and support and you can't do it all on your own, or why should you want to? It isn't a weak thing to need others. You don't have to be the giving one all the time. You don't have to be defensive. Look how sassy she is, despite being open. Two of fire, you're contemplating this journey. <laughs> you're contemplating dipping your toe in the water, despite the fact that it's fiery. You're traveling on a giraffe. You're a little bit hunched over on this giraffe, on your chosen vehicle. You're sort of cuddling yourself up. You've got one knee drawn up to your chest which suggests you're not totally confident or sure or secure. But you don't need to be because the giraffe can see much higher and much further than you. And I think you've possibly accepted this and are just allowing yourself to be guided. It's got this light. The light is carrying you forward. You have a light behind you, but you are protective, protected. Your giraffe is standing on a cliff. We've got cliff edge. There's something about taking a leap, something, but it's not like a leap of faith. It's not a mad leap like the fool. And you've got this amazingly powerful, tall, long necked animal with greater vision, further reach, higher sight than you. You've got on your giraffe. That's the important thing and you're trusting the giraffe to move you forward. To move you out of this energy. I love the hermit. I love the green man type connections here in this wonderful oak door. The range of keys above the door and the lock. Green man on the door, we've got this Celtic spiral symbols on the door. There's two messages here. First of all, I think you are ready to open or look open to love and you've got the keys and the lock it's time to come out of hermit mode i feel that you've done your healing you might feel that you want to stay in hermit mode a little longer 
But look at all these different keys that you can play around with. And I want to say play. Be open like her. If you don't like one of them, you can get rid of them and have a new one. <laughs> and I know that's talking about men. Um, but just in general, you know, you've got all these different keys. Try them out. But unlock your heart a little. Open, open up that door. Open up to the possibilities that surround you now for love, for passion, for relationships, for fulfillment. There is heartbreak here. The three of air is often shown as a, a heart with three swords in it. And I'm, the, I am getting some kind of a betrayal because we have these two little, two little birds up here with crowns, leaving one little bird here. And our lady is sort of self-cuddling. I think you have been hurt in love and you have been in hermit mode, healing, going within. because of heartbreak and betrayal, but you are ready to come out of heartbreak now. These two little birds are united, they have little crowns. But look, you have a little bird with a crown waiting for you. New love is out there. That is what you are becoming. You are becoming open to receiving love again and letting passion and fulfillment into your life. And I don't just see it as one partner and a relationship. I see it as finding your soul tribe, finding a bunch of like-minded people surrounding yourself with healthy, passionate, fulfilling relationships on all level. Some things are being hidden right now. For sure you have the moon. Um, connecting to the hermit and we've got nicks and secrets. I don't think the universe quite wants you to know what wonderful surprises are coming in for you in the love department just yet. Because they want you to move from the hermit into empress mode and the empress loves herself. She is open and she is giving, she is abundant, she is fertile. She has enough of everything and I think that's the key. I think you've gone within and done the healing from the hermit, from the heartbreak. Tentatively, you are setting off with light and hope, hope in your heart. God, lines from songs have been coming out. What's that walk on? <laughs> and the hermit actually usually has a little, um, carries a little lantern. Hope, you've got a giraffe carrying yours for you. Yep, step into self-love. Become this. And the possibilities are endless. The magic is endless. I'm getting here, wish upon a star. You've got a new moon coming up. Set your intentions for the love and the magic that you want to attract into your life. New moon this Friday. It's an April Fool's Day. <laughs> Talked about the cliff and the fool and taking a leap of faith. You're not taking a leap, but you're trusting. Be open to love. Set your intentions under this 
you may. Nyx, goddess of secrets. She's got stars all around her, stars, magic everywhere. And despite sitting up in the moon, this lady is calling the stars, calling the magic to her. Yeah, make your wish. Uh, call in the love that you want. Um, right, what's the word called? Like, um, like a vision board or a list of features that you want, qualities that you want to have from this new love. I want to read Nick some secrets because these are nice secrets. It's so almost like Christmas, uh, being a child and Father Christmas, and are you going to get what you've wished for on your list? And then, and then magically pick, gosh, what I've just said about manifesting and lists. Yeah, treat it like Christmas when you write, as a child, you wrote your list for Father Christmas. And when you actually believed and nothing was too crazy. My sister wished for a candy floss one year. <laughs> um, nothing's too crazy. Yeah, put it out there to the universe under this moon. I think you'd be very surprised what comes in. Okay, I hope you can see this as I read. There are times when you must surrender your need to know. Some things open up only when they choose to and not by demand. The mysterious and the unknowable is the domain of the Greek goddess Nyx. She shows you the veils may not part for you at this time. Right now you're meant to keep on your path trusting that the secrets will be revealed as the goddess decides. I told you. The moon, things that you can't see at the moment. Remain true to your intentions and keep on moving forward. Keep on keeping on. And there's another song. That one is First Aid Kit Silver Linings. God, all the songs have been out today. Yeah, there might be something in that song or in the image of that song video. First Aid Kit Silver Linings. Oh, okay, remain true to your intentions and keep on moving forward, remain curious and open to what you can discover. Allow your need to know the details right now to fall away and just be present to all that life is offering you. Judge nothing as good or bad and just be with what arises. Soon the treasure you seek will be revealed and it will be better and more valuable than you could have imagined. The goddess Nyx knows what's best for you. Trust and all will be revealed in divine timing. Yes. The treasure you seek will be revealed and it will be better and more valuable than you could have imagined. Who are you becoming? You're becoming somebody who is open to the magic of life, who is open to love, who is open to opening their heart and receiving as well as giving. Manifest. Trust. What you've asked for, the universe is putting together and is going to deliver to you in a package, in a parcel that is bigger and better and shinier and brighter and more special and more precious than anything you could have imagined for yourself. Absolutely beautiful pile three. Have a wonderful Sunday pile three. Hello pile four. This is turning into a really long reading. Okay, really interested to see what your cards are going to say because I don't usually pull four, four piles. <laughs> okay, uh, before I get into this, let me just remember to say 
I'm doing a free reader giveaway when I reach 250 subscribers. To be in with a chance of receiving a free reading from me, all you need to do is sub subscribe and drop me a comment, even if it's just a heart emoji, any colour in the comment box. And that will enter you with a chance once I receive 250 subscribers of winning a reading of your choice uh, with me. Right, that said, let's get on with your reading pile four. I see why this one needed to come out. Two queens, the magician, the hanged man, major arcana. A goddess, you've only got one minor arcana card in here. This is powerful. If you came to this as your first pile, you are you have, who are you becoming? Well, I think you're awakening to the fact that you have a lot of spiritual gifts and be an open channel. Um, I think more and more gifts are coming in. You may have chosen another pile and this pile The first pile you chose is who you are becoming. This pile, if you came from another pile first, is where you eventually might be. And then there's a third thing that I actually think this fourth pile has something for all of the other three piles, almost like an additional message. Okay. So I'm going to start pile four, the ancestor, the spirit message, be an open channel, mediumship, ancestors, spirits. So who are you becoming? You're becoming a very clear channel with the divide. You might have the spiritual gift of being a natural medium of communicating with spirit. Um, I'm drawn to this lady and the two, I don't know the names, but these two sticks, which are obviously important tools to her. One's raised to the air and one is held like a rod on the ground. I feel she's anchoring in, she's receiving downloads and she's grounding, she's anchoring in. And that's what she needs to do in order to be this channel. Headdress, something heavy on the forehead. I think your gifts may have frightened you. And I think you may have been afraid about stepping into your power. This is about surrendering and opening up. You are grounded, I'll tell you now, you've got the Queen of Earth, so if you are frightened by the spirit world, there is no need to be because you are anchored and you are grounded. You have the Queen of Air, you have mental clarity. Yeah, this one rod up in the air, down here, are anchored to the divine. Um, you're grounded, you're protected. There is nothing to fear. You are anchored and rooted. Let's have a look at the culture that this lady comes from in the book. Here we are, be an open channel. The Zulu people place great importance on looking after and honouring their ancestors. Who they, who they refer to as 
Amadlizi. As ancestors protect, guide and help the living family members connect to the divine consciousness, it's wise to keep them happy. Souls are brought from the place of physical death to the family home where there's a sacred place dedicated to the ancestor spirits. The space is called M. Sano and it's here that people communicate with or make, it, make offerings to their ancestors. Making an offering then to making an offering, having a, an altar might be important to this pile. It's believed that unhappy ancestors could be a source of troubles such as financial hardships, accident or sickness. For example, for assistance communicating with and appeasing their ancestors, people may call upon a Sangoma, a respected healer and medium. A Sangoma uses ritual and traditional medicines to address physical and spiritual ailments. Okay, so there's something in that for you. Something of a healer. I've already picked up on the mediumship. Medicine, traditional medicines, medicine woman. And it's a, um, a female across the top, a male across the bottom. Another pile was the opposite way. So I said a lot of gifts, wow. So healing, medicine, physical and spiritual healing. The Sangoma has shown up to make you aware that you're a natural born medium who can channel past loved ones and spirits. You may have already felt or seen spirit or received signs or messages from the other side, yeah, for sure. You'll also be called to deliver a message or act on behalf of someone's ancestor or loved one. It's time for you to learn more about your natural mediumship and channeling skills. This is who you're becoming. This is why this fourth pile had to be here and it was important. Hone your natural mediumship with study and practice. Begin by asking your spirit guides and ancestors to surround you in a protective bubble of gold light. Here we are. To ground you, to protect you. Oh, and this one, the humour, this is lovely. Read about mediumship. Join a development group or attend a workshop. Do not be afraid of your gifts. It's wonderful what you do. Okay, that's important. Don't be afraid. I, I, I said you might be frightened of this. Don't be afraid and there is some practical help there and you are grounded and you are protected. In fact, I'm going to talk about this Queen of Earth first. So Queen of Earth is Queen of Pentacles. She is grounded. She is stabled. It's almost like she is surrounded by this sort of golden greeny light of the forest. And her hair is almost foliage, certainly on her shoulder she has ivy. She has antlers on her head. And her nose is almost that of an animal. It has a, a pink tip. And when I look at her, I think about that film, and I'm going to forget the name of it now, Avatar. She reminds me of those people who are connected and tuned into nature and the spirit of all living things around them. That's you and your antenna, your antlers. See, they're bone. They're incredibly grounded and stable. There is nothing to be afraid of. The Queen of Air came out first, the Queen of Swords. Look how owls are wisdom. She has this enormous white owl on her shoulder. These headdresses, she's looking facing forward. She is receiving downloads, spiritual downloads. She, you, are in communication with spirit, sitting there, spirit guides on your shoulder all the time, whispering wisdom into your ear. And it has frightened you. You've wanted to be one of 
the geese, one of the gaggle, one of the pack. But honey, you're not one of these. You are far more magical. Spirits up here protecting you. Let your own magical, <laughs> weird, freaky little inner bird out. You don't have to fit, on, fit in. You can take off the mask. You don't need to be like the rest of the <laughs> geese. You're meant to be different. You're meant to stand out. And I think this has upset you and caused you problems for years and years. It's okay, Spirit is saying it is okay to embrace these gifts and to be different and to stand out from what are actually very ordinary domesticated birds. You are a bird of an entirely different calibre. I'm talking about birds of a highly different calibre. We move on to the hanged man. And this has got to be the most handsome hanged man I've ever seen. But again, he's like a bird man. It's almost like a fallen angel here. Let me show you him right way up. He's handsome. There's something of the pixie or the fae about him with his ears. Um, he looks like he's got peacock feathers in his hair and the feathers he has on his shoulders like wings. All oh, this beautiful blues and golds. Look at the tiny little thing he's hanging on to and he's being held by. He's got his wings. Time for you to fly, fly the nest <laughs> in all your fabulous, glorious, beautiful originality. You're a peacock, not a goose. <laughs> you're an owl, you're a tawny owl. You're a dove, you're... It's beautiful white winged. Oh. Oh, no wonder I'm laughing. <laughs> You've got humour here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, you are magical, you're powerful. The magician has all of the tools he needs. You can create, you can alchemise. Doesn't matter if your tools are bamboo and feather or fur. doesn't matter whether you draw your power from fire, air, earth, water. It's actually for way of the change, not too much water on here. The hanged man is a Piscean card of procrastination. I don't think you've been procrastinating. I just think you've genuinely tried to hide your magic and hide your gifts. I'm looking now at this mosaic design he has here. And that she has, can't hide it anymore. Can't hide your uniqueness anymore. It's time to come out, spread those wings and show your glorious magic to the world. You have the tools, you can manipulate energies, you can alchemize. Again, this magician, older man, sort of Merlin type energies connected to the forest. I think he's grounded, I think he's wise. He's not a tricky or manipulative. I'm feeling this is almost like a guide that you can call on to help you feel grounded. A, a necklace 
necklace, something with a crystal that you can wear and perhaps hold and if you feel things that are coming in are too powerful and too fast. But your greatest, greatest asset, and she was under here, in all of these fabulous earthy colours, Uzume, humour. Just laugh at the situation. I have been through some quite in intense experiences. And um, one of the reasons I named myself the batshit psych chick and people that know me have been surprised about how restrained I've been on this channel because sometimes when I am channeling, I am babbling and laughing and cackling. Uh, embrace it with a sense of humour. Laugh at your gifts. Laugh at sometimes the most ridiculous messages that you're getting from spirit the most ridiculous ideas or songs. I went through a phase of getting Mary Poppins songs all the time. And I was, you know, t telling quite, quite a cool person this story once who's a musician and I said, well, sorry, not gonna like this, but the song that I've got in my head for you is Mary Poppins, Feed the Birds. And he just started laughing and he said, that was my favorite film as a kid. Um, employ humour when you're sort of frightened. If you need to ground and come back down to earth, have a laugh. Um, and you might need to surround yourself with people outside of, um, if you like, the spiritual community. People that you can just ground with and come, come down to earth. I think I'd like to finish by giving by reading Azume and seeing if there is a message. When the Japanese goddess of laughter and mirth, Azume enters your day, be playful and cultivate good humoured, good natured humour. Laughter is the best medicine and exceptionally healing at this time. Yeah, keep your vibration high. Keep your focus on fun and positivity and see the humour in life if you can. Life's not meant to be all work and no play, all focus and no release. Humour fosters resilience and lightheartedness, alleviates emotional pain, giving a much needed break from the burdens and speed of life. Now is the time for you to be silly, laugh more, even take up laughing yoga. Yes, the world is serious and your dreams and desires are too. But the joyful goddess Yuzumi reminds you to enjoy your life and have fun. Yeah, 100%. I think that's what we all need to do as a collective. So part four, that was your reading. Whether you came here first, because this is the pile with the greatest number of spiritual gifts who you are on your path to becoming. Downloads, You, I think you're discovering new gifts by the day, by the week, by the month and it might frighten you some time. Keep a sense of humour, ground, you are protected. If you came here from another pile, this might be where you are on your way to becoming a little bit further along the journey. And finally, I actually think this is a collective message for all of us, whatever our gifts are, it's incredibly important to be open to spirit and to be receptive, to remember to ground, to remember to be magic and embrace ourselves in all our unique uniqueness and have a sense of humour and have a laugh. And that's it. Brightest blessings to you, Pile 4, and to all of you.